What's up everybody, David here, and today is episode four of five tips and tricks for Sonar Platinum. I can't believe I've done four of these, but people really seem to love them. You guys have given me great feedback, and I just love giving you those tips and tricks that I think everyone should know, and just stuff that helps you make more and better music, because that's the goal, making music. So of course, if you haven't watched episode one, two, or three, make sure to watch it. There's some great stuff in there, and I will put the link in the description below. So that being said, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get started. Freeze Track is a feature within Sonar that allows you to temporarily bounce down a track to an audio file to save CPU power. Let me give you an example. So I have this bass track right now that I mixed and I'm done with it for now and I wanna move on to something else, but I wanna save some CPU and disable these plugins. That's where Freeze Track comes into play. So what we're gonna do is expand the track like we have now and we're just going to hit this snowflake right here and freeze the track. And you'll see the mixing audio loading bar at the top, but let's skip through this to save some time. So once the track is frozen, you will see a blue and yellow audio track right here, letting you know that all the plugins have been bounced down into the bass track and you're now just working with a piece of audio. All the plugins have now been disabled, including the pro channel, and that's what's gonna save you the CPU power. So let's say later on you think, I need to go back and change something on the bass. To unfreeze it, all you have to do is click the snowflake one more time and that simply unfreezes the track. It will restore all of your original clips and then re-enable all of the plugins and the pro channel. Another feature is quick unfreeze and quick freeze. So when we just unfreezed it like normal, it deleted the bounced audio track. Now when we right click on the snowflake and hit quick unfreeze, this will not delete the bounced audio, but it will simply mute it and hide it so that once we freeze it again, the change is instantaneous and it goes back to the bounced audio track. Now, one more great feature about the freeze track option is that it works on the soft synth as well. So I have this addictive drums track loaded. I have my MIDI put in, drums sound awesome, but I wanna freeze it and disable this plugin. So what we're gonna do is freeze synth, it's going to mix it down and boom, now we have an audio file to work with, again, saving us that CPU power. So this tip directly relates to copying third-party plugins. If you guys don't know how to do that, I did cover it in episode one of Sonar Tips and Tricks, so I will link that in the description below. Make sure to check it out, it's awesome and it saves you a ton of time. But this tip is going to cover how Sonar operates when copying the third-party plugins because it has changed when going from X3 to Platinum. So when you're working in the console window, it's really easy to decide where a plugin goes when you drag it or move it or copy it because you just simply place it wherever you want and it'll move it. But what about when you're working in the track window? So I'm referring to something I do a lot where I've clicked on a track, I have it open in the inspector, and I just wanna drag it to another track, but nothing is expanded. You can't choose where it goes. And that's where this tip comes in. On Sonar X3, when dragging or copying a plugin in the track window without expanding any of the tracks, it will always put the plugin under the existing effects in that track. But in Sonar Platinum, they changed that. So when you drag or copy a plugin, it stacks the plugins. It will always put it on top of the existing plugins. So to make that a little bit easier, let me give you an example. I'm gonna use both of these lead guitar tracks. Both of the tracks have the virtual mix rack, but I wanna drag this Q10 to the lead guitar right. So let's open this and make it easier to see. On Sonar X3, if I were to just drag the Q10 on top of the track right here, it would put it under the virtual mix rack like so. But on Sonar Platinum, they've changed it so that when you drag it on top of a track, it places it on top. It stacks it bottom to top. Now this just might seem like a dumb tip, but it's something that's really useful to keep in mind when you have all tracks collapsed and you're just kind of dragging them between the two and you're doing all these weird copies and pastes and stuff and it's just a good thing to keep in mind so that you can keep things in order while copying and dragging them between separate tracks. So I'm gonna show you guys how to record a metronome. Now why might we need this? So let's say we have a song we're working on and I want to export a version of the song where the metronome is audible. Currently there's no way to do that. 
there's no way to export a song and have the metronome included in the final bounce. So this is where we have to get crafty and record it onto a regular audio track. So let's get started. The first step here is to make sure we have a metronome bus set up. So we're gonna press Shift and B to open up the bus pane. And as you can see, we already have a metronome bus in here. That is because when you use a template inside of Sonar, any one of them, you get three buses automatically set up for you. A master bus, a metronome, and a preview. The only template that does not include this is a blank project because, well, it's just a blank project. So if you're using a template, you don't need this first step, but for the sake of learning, let's say you don't have one and let's set one up right now. So first thing we wanna do is right click in any open space and insert a stereo bus. This is going to create a brand new bus and we're now gonna name it metronome. Next, we're gonna go up to the metronome settings up by the time clock and in these settings, you're gonna see a metronome output option. So this allows you to route it to any bus you would like. In this case, we're going to send it to the metronome bus that we just created. So metronome, apply, and close. Now the metronome should be routed to that bus. So let's arm it for playback and then give it a test. Cool, everything is working perfect and it's getting the signal. Next, we're gonna move on to recording it. And to do that, we need to send the metronome to an auxiliary track. An auxiliary track is a special track within Sonar that can receive and record audio from other tracks in the DAW. Hopefully you see where I'm going here. So to create a new aux track, the easiest way is to go to the output of the metronome and select new aux track. And as you see in the track window, we now have aux one available. So now the last step is to just record the metronome. So we're gonna arm the aux one track so it records the signal coming from the metronome bus and we're going to make sure the metronome is playing during recording. Lastly, just press record. So now, as you can see, we have an audio track of the metronome that can be exported just like normal. So this next tip is going to help you when importing and naming your tracks in Sonar. So one of my few gripes about Sonar is that the naming of the tracks, that, that whole system isn't very good. If you're importing a lot of tracks and you wanna name them and be organized, it's not very easy to do so quickly. So the normal way I guess people would do this is let's say I have 10 tracks to import into Sonar. I already have 10 tracks set up and lastly, the only thing to do is to go up to import, audio and select the 10 tracks you want. Now I'm gonna fast forward through this loading part. So now that all the tracks are imported, if we wanted to name them, we have two options. We can go up and double click on the track name and then type in the new name. And there's one easier way with naming it inside the track window. If you actually just click on the name of the track, hit enter and then name it. Enter one more time, down on the keyboard, enter again, and it opens it for editing. Or we can click on the track, go to the inspector, and then name it within the track options. Either way, this takes a long time if you're working with a big project that has a lot of tracks in it. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I've learned to do this a little bit faster. So let's start fresh with no audio tracks. What you wanna do is start with only one track in the DAW. So we're gonna delete two through nine so we only have track one. Next, we're gonna right click in the clips pane and hit import audio. And we're gonna choose the audio just like we normally would and let it import. Again, I'm gonna fast forward through this part. So now the audio is imported just like normal, but there's a few differences. Since there was only one track available, every new piece of audio got its own new track. And on that track, it took the name from the clip and placed it onto the track name. So the tracks are now already named for you. The only one you'd have to go back and name is the first one that was already there. This can save you quite a bit of time, like I said, if you're working with a big project. Now, me being me and just being kind of OCD about this kind of stuff, this kind of bugs me having this little extra number in the parentheses, so usually I'll sometimes go through and delete that, but if that doesn't matter to you, this names your tracks quite a bit quicker and just makes life a whole lot easier. And Sonar, please update this in the future because that would be dope. All right, so this one is super quick. I'm just gonna show you how to copy Pro Channel EQ between the tracks. So I have this guitar left track that I've done some EQing on and I wanna copy the EQ over to the guitar right and it's actually really easy to do. First, you're gonna hold control, click on the EQ graph and drag it over to the one that you want to paste it on and that's it. 
And you can do this whether the pro channel is expanded or not. It will always let you copy between different tracks. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped you out. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And of course, I'm gonna keep these videos coming as I think of more tips that I deem worthy to be on the glorious Sonar Tips and Tricks show. Until then, guys, do not forget to like and subscribe. There's new videos every single week and you don't wanna miss any content. And as always, thank you so much for watching. My name is David and I'll see you next time.